welcome back to Bible Fun with the Duns. We're headed home from the convention and we just read Deuteronomy 33, the next to the last chapter. And it was a sweet chapter. Moses, um, of course, we know he's getting ready to die, to go to heaven, to be with the Lord. What was that? I was dead. Okay. And what I see in this chapter, he wants to leave the Israelites a blessing. He wants to bless them, and it's a good throwback because the Israelites are made up of these tribes. It reminds us of when Jacob died, and we see, like, Moses in a fatherly light, which is exactly what he's been to God's people. Yeah, I think that this is one of those moments where <clears throat> we get to see the, the heart and the tenderness behind one of God's leaders. Uh, that it's not all just business and it's not all just responsibility. There's like genuine love. So here's what, and listen, this is not a difficult chapter to understand. It's not rocket science. It's more family than anything else. So we've spent the last couple of days representing our church at the Southern Baptist Convention. And uh, just picture like a multi-day business meeting. There are moments in a business meeting where somebody gets up to conduct really important business but maybe they personally know something about what they're doing or somebody they're dealing with. And so you'll often hear a presenter say something like this. He'll say, he'll say, Mr. Moderator, I want to take a moment of personal privilege here and just say, and he just says what he wants to say, and then he gets to business. So imagine Moses, now 40 years of leading these folks through the wilderness. He's about to die. He's turning over the official role of leadership to Joshua. And he says, but before I go, I want the best for my babies. And so here's what he does. Following the tradition of Isaac and Jacob, he goes through the children of Israel. And he, in essence, he's giving them what he wants for them. Now, they're hard-headed and they're stubborn, but he wants what's best for them. And here's what he does. He puts a lot of this in the forms of, of prayers. So he wants, he prays for them to be physically blessed, protected, um, to, to be wealthy, to be healthy, to be wise. He's praying for them the way you would or I would pray for my loved one. I want them to be taken care of. I want them to be successful. I want the best for them. Can I tell you this? There is a strong heritage in scripture of being able to pray specifically for the blessings of the people we know and love. Now, there's a time to pray for our enemies. There's a time to pray for our neighbors. But there is nothing selfish about also praying for the people we love. As a matter of fact, can I tell you this? The people that you love the most in your life, nobody is going to pray for them better than you pray for them because nobody knows them better than you know them. And so, take a moment of personal privilege and pray over the people you love. I think that's what that chapter is about. And I think God is good in that he allows that. And so, that's what I got out of the chapter. Love it. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys tomorrow right. for the end of Deuteronomy. All right, bye. Bye.